Young Miami is next on a motherfucking docket. Apparently, Miss Mamas was Diddy's worker, and um, you know, like the S work. Yeah, that's what she was, and allegedly transported the for him and did it with him. And she received the funds after she was done being the S worker. You guys should be aware that in the most recent chapter of Diddy's story. Young Miami is being exposed for supposedly snitching on Diddy to Homeland Security in an attempt to save herself after delivering cocaine for Diddy. Diddy has had a chaotic week, and despite his young, attractive girlfriend's best efforts to avoid the problem thus far, she was heavily drawn into it. According to recent court documents, Miami allegedly used to smuggle drugs for Diddy's use, and at his parties, she allegedly consumed them with him. She is obviously in a lot of trouble with the federal authorities as a result of this, but she doesn't intend to go down with Diddy since she is supposedly in the process of working out a deal with them to snitch on Diddy and get her out of it. Now you better think again because Diddy knows where all the bodies are buried. If you believed Miami was her ride or die wop, and she has no trouble assisting the feds in their quest to learn the truth about Diddy, the scenario is a complete mess, guys. Young Miami appears to be quite capable of great things. It's a crazy mixed-up world, as the prophet Snoop Doggy Dog famously remarked in the year of our Lord, 1993. Dogs devour dogs in this planet. It is a universe of doggy dogs. It's also entirely accurate, because why in the world are all of the people engaged in this Diddy disaster so willing to spill the tea and turn on one another? It's amazing how Diddy and Young Miami were having a great time together just a few months ago, and promising one other they would ride or die together, both to the skies and beyond. No matter what life threw at them or anything like that, they were going to be there for each other. But when Diddy was sued last year, that promise was swiftly broken. Cassie Ventura, his ex-girlfriend and former bad boy musician, spoke extensively about the abuse she endured from Diddy when they were dating. Describing how he used to frequently slap her, put his hands on her, and leave her with body bruises all over. No one in his circle, she said, would speak out for. They were all too afraid of Diddy, and they were afraid of what he would do if they ever ventured to challenge him. So they didn't dare speak up for her or defend her. She further stated that Diddy had forced her to employ male escorts as pimps, and that he had coerced her into taking drugs and drink. Before compelling her to have physical relations with them and filming the entire thing, if that wasn't awful enough, she also said that Diddy used to film these freak offs, have her watch them, and use that footage as leverage any time she attempted to stand up for herself or put her foot down. Get away from him. She eventually managed to leave in 2018. However, her life was chaotic for the first several months after her departure. She was then able to move on, get married. And have a lovely family and start a new life. They did send a ripple through Hollywood when she was able to have the bravery to expose Diddy in the lawsuit last year. Diddy wasn't the only person drawn into this, though, as Young Miami received a lot of backlash for being associated with Diddy. People wondered why in the world she was hanging around with someone who was abusing other women in that way, and it damaged her reputation and gave her a negative image, negative reputation as well. Not only that, but followers managed to unearth an old tweet from her implying that she was more involved in Diddy's freak-offs than we were aware of. She added some disparaging remarks about Diddy's other sidekick, Gina Hewen, in the tweet, seeming as though she was threatening to compel Diddy to make Gina flip out. Diddy would have had you on your knees if she had wanted you to consume her urine. She added, "You're a foodie. Since I entered the picture, Gina, you have been really into me." You have cried for a child for a decade. You have existed as a bee that consumes P and D whenever it pleases. You are a foodie. You are the same bee who cried over Tasha K because you desired a child. Sadly, Sushi. Indeed, it seemed as though she was attempting to intimidate. Gina had a freak of her own, which led to her being hauled for dirt and her starting to crash with Diddy. To make matters worse, though. Gina did indeed have a conversation with Tasha K about how she felt wounded, and that Diddy had touched her when they were together. Um, I mean, in the beginning, like the first three and a half years, he was. I mean, like the first three month, three four months, he was really nice, but then after that, he was he started being an asshole. So like, um, he was a 
If he was like always belittling me and always like, he, I just, he was like mentally, emotionally, and physically a me. He took one of my sh heels and tried to throw it at me. And then he like, like mushed my face and like really hard and made my nose. She further stated that he had her get rid of it once she became pregnant. And, uh, you mind telling me what happened with that pregnancy? Um, he, well, I told him and he was like, he was like, you're going to get an abortion, right? And then I was like, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know yet. And then, and then he offered me 50,000 to get rid of it, but I turned it If all of this is accurate, Miami is in a terrible situation. However, nothing was proven. All that was happening was Van's conjecture about possible activities involving Miami and Diddy. Furthermore, there was no proof that Miami coerced other women into freak-offs, and if she did engage in any with Diddy, it was without evidence. As long as it was limited to using her body, she was free to exercise her right as an adult to do anything she pleased with it. But because she started to separate herself from Diddy right on, there were growing suspicions that she knew more about his alleged activities than she was disclosing. This was prior to the other four lawsuits being filed, which is when we began to suspect that there might be more skeletons in that cupboard. Then, as we all know, Diddy was sued by three additional women who claimed he had similarly assassinated them, making matters worse for Diddy. He was pulled aside once more, but Miami began to go above and above to demonstrate that she was no longer connected to Diddy and that she was letting go of their past relationship. She declared that she was ushering in a new period of time that she calls her Yan's era. She absolutely stopped talking about Diddy on social media and removed all of her Diddy-related posts. However, it went beyond all of the social media stuff, as reports indicate that she... She cut ties with Diddy because he was no longer able to provide her with money each month, and she did so sooner than he had anticipated. A source claims that Diddy is no longer covering young Miami's expenses. According to our friend, Diddy has been financing opulent Miami condo rentals, private jets, and shopping excursions. Diddy has since reduced those costs. Diddy isn't as giving as he once was, but he still got young Miami a Christmas present. The source goes on to say that Diddy's mental health is also not great. Someone like Carisha is much needed in his life. She is genuinely concerned about him, not just his wealth, though that is certainly essential. Therefore, if he wants her company, he has to pay again. Due of Diddy's refusal to give her money and the Dove's association with him, Miami fled before he could drag her down with him. She also undoubtedly believed that by doing this, people would forget that she was completely infatuated with him. At these award shows, Poppy, talk about yes. However, it's a little bit too late. Do any of you recall that song? Include it in the remarks. Because listen, Homeland Security is currently investigating Miss Young Miami and is getting involved. She has come under fire for supposedly smuggling cocaine for Diddy. Do you recall producer Lil Rod as the most recent defendant in Diddy's lawsuit? Well, Miami was briefly referenced in his case at first, claiming that although she was at the parties and saw her cousin having an affair with Little Rod, the incident wasn't so bad that it warranted her inclusion in the complaint. But that lawsuit has been revised, and in it, don't you think Miami looks awful? You're all aware of the claims that Diddy provides her a monthly salary of 500000 because he finds her attractive and makes nice company, right? That's apparently a bunch of bullshit because the lawsuit said she was Diddy's personal assistant. According to court documents, Robin Greenhill paid young Miami, Jade, and Daphne Joy a monthly fee for serving as Mr. Combs' sex workers and for receiving payments via wire transfer. These documents also detailed the defendant's continuous criminal activities. 
Given what we already know about Diddy and Miami's connection, this isn't all that startling, but the really interesting part was the allegation that Miami was Diddy's go-to drug supplier. The plaintiff and Combs Rico Enterprise were practicing something near Westerville, Virginia, according to court filings. Plaintiff Jones personally saw Mr. Combs smoke a couple of lines of cocaine in his dressing room, according to the court filing. Sean Combs, the defendant, requested Tucci, but Brendan overlooked it. Christina Corum, the defendant, called Young Miami, who then transported it from Miami on the private jet. This is terrible, really terrible for her, all of you. Since it's not like her involvement in freak-offs is being conjectured by fans, there are some severe federal issues here. However, you can guarantee everything that Miami is not attempting to sync with Diddy. An unnamed source said that she is aware that Diddy is powerless to save her and is willing to turn on him to the authorities in exchange for her freedom. She knows that if she doesn't snitch, she will almost certainly spend time in prison, so she doesn't want to risk that. She purports to be aware of a number of further alleged crimes, as well as the locations of all the remains, that might lock Diddy up for a very long time. And in case you're wondering why she feels at ease betraying Diddy, know that this is a dog-eat-dog world. Furthermore, Miami is aware that Diddy is not a reliable source of protection for her, as he is said to have fled when Homeland Security detained his sons. Given that half of the individuals on Instagram are merely faking it, the whole complicated and suspenseful issue only serves to highlight how outrageous Hollywood can be and how you can never trust anything you see there. To be able to buy the things they flaunt on social media, they're engaging in some rather dubious behaviour, media. But as you are aware, there is a lot of conversation about it in the streets, and people there generally agree that since she didn't cry when she was living a bad life and abusing people while she was with him, she should meet her demise with the same fervour. So Carisha, also known as Young Miami, was Diddy's drug mule and prostitute. It makes sense that he gave her our own show as payment for her efforts, and that she consistently outperformed other worthy and more competent podcasters to gain these accolades. Now everything becomes sense. I'll put in some work. Not that it surprises you that Young Miami is identified as Diddy's in the court filings. Personal assistant. Yes, it goes by that name. Although you refer to it as tricking to feel better, closeness is being compensated for. You are that, my love. An intimate worker. This is how it operates. Do you guys honestly believe that young Miami Miss Shorty Wop Miss Yes Poppy will turn on her former partner? Change her previous boo? Truly going to get all boo-ish on her? After seeing this following video, please leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Upgrade to pro right now.